Hello everybody and welcome back to another engineering statics lecture video. In this video we're going to be talking about something new which is multiplication and division by scalars. So before we start I just want to say that I hope you all are doing well. Let's begin. I kind of alluded to vectors are tricky in the sense that they have their own unique set of rules for mathematics and those vary depending on what we're talking about. So the first one is multiplication and division by a scalar. So this is going to be very important, but luckily for us, this is actually the easy one. So we don't have to worry too much. The second one is vector addition and subtraction, and that's going to be the whole goal moving forward for the rest of this week. So this is video one, videos two and three. They're going to be talking about this specific feature right here, vector addition and subtraction. And this is going to be perhaps one of the most important topics of this entire course. Because what we're doing with vectors, because essentially vectors are forces. Forces, right? If we're engineers, we're designing for forces. And if we have a building that has many forces, we're going to want to add them together to figure out the total force on that building. So number two here, vector addition and subtraction, it's going to be a big one. And again, those will be in the next two videos. And finally, we have dot product and cross product. Now that's kind of hard to explain, but don't worry, we're going to cover that. It looks really complex, but it's actually pretty easy. So you guys won't have too much trouble. So again, I just want to give you guys a quick review of what we're going to do. Multiplication and division by scalar, we're going to cover right now. Vector addition and subtraction, that's the topic of the next two videos. And dot product and cross product, those will be the topic of week two videos. So videos maybe four, five, and six, something like that. Now, let's talk about that first one. Multiplication by scalar. Like I said, it sounds complex, but it's actually really simple. If we were to have a vector, a, and multiply it by a scalar, small a, well, the result is actually going to be another vector, b. So again, small a is a scalar, and capital A with the arrow, that's going to be our vector, and the result of this is also going to be another vector. Now, vector multiplication simply scales the length of a vector by the scalar. Now, you guys may be saying, Clayton, scales the length of what does that mean? Well, let me show you. Let's say that we have our vector a. It's looking good, it's having fun. And currently the magnitude of A is three. So it could either be, let's say three meters per second, three kilonewtons, three pounds, whatever you guys want to have it as whatever vector you guys want. And I wanna take this vector and I want to multiply it by the scalar two. So my new vector B, which is simply two multiplied by vector A, all it's going to do is simply stretch that vector by a factor of two. So the new magnitude of the vector b is going to be six, simply three times two. Nice and simple, right? So again, vector multiplication, all we have to do is take that scalar and scale the vector accordingly. Now, the key to note, and this is what you guys can't forget, is the direction does not change. Remember that. So we took our vector a, we stretched it to form vector b, but the direction did not change. It's still going along the same line it still has the same sense. So there's kind of the key there. Now let's talk about two special cases of this multiplication. The first one is division. So we talked about multiplication. We said, oh, it's actually not too bad, nice and easy. But what about division? Well, it sounds complex, but it's actually just as simple as multiplication because division is actually just a special case of multiplication. So let's say that we had our vector b and it's actually the division of vector a divided by the scalar a. Well, this can actually be rewritten as one divided by the scalar a multiplied by vector a. So as we can see here, it's just a special case of multiplication. So let's say that our original vector a has a magnitude of six, and I want to divide this vector by two. Well, this is the same as multiplying this vector by one half. And again, that scalar just scales the vector. So if I'm scaling it by one half, well, we may figure out that it's simply just going to shrink the vector. So the vector went from a magnitude of six now to a magnitude of three. So again, all we did was shrink it by a factor of one half, nice and simple. Now, the second special case is multiplication by a negative scalar, all right? Negative scalar. Thus far, we've only dealt with positives. What happens if we throw in a negative just for fun? Well, it's actually just as simple. Negative scalars just flip the direction of a vector. That's it, that's all. So let's say that we had our vector A, it currently has a magnitude of three, and we multiply it by negative two. Well, as you guys can imagine, we have the two there, so we are going to scale that vector by a factor of two. So the new magnitude, of course, becomes six. But notice that since we have a negative there, 
the direction of the vector did change. The line of action remains the same, so that's important to note, but the arrowhead simply flips to the other side. And that's it, that's all you do. And another thing to keep in mind is even though we multiplied by a negative number, notice how the magnitude again stays the same. Magnitudes are always going to be positive values. So yeah, that's it for this. Remember, I kind of hinted multiplication and division by scalar, nice and easy. And that's it for this video, guys. So thank you guys so much for watching. I really appreciate it. I hope you guys have a wonderful day. I will see you guys in the next video.